Um, we're here with uh, Hive On. I mean, uh, like nobody's ever heard of Hive before, right? <laughs> One of the biggest, um, you know, crypto management platforms yep. just out there in general. And you've got some new stuff going on. So can you tell me a little bit about this um, energy initiative thing that you're doing? Okay. Uh, well, I'm head of energy projects with, uh, with Hive On. And what we do is actually we started looking at, um, let's say about a year ago, uh, it's potential which we can go just uh, beyond like standard uh, products which we offer already to market which were been uh, quite well established mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, we well, so maybe I'll start with some little prehistory about myself yeah as myself I'm uh, I've been in the energy industry for 15 years okay yeah I done I think the full value chain actually going from you know coal mining to you know operation like coal fire wall of shame that's then, good yeah <laughs> and, uh, and to renewables eventually mm -hmm. so I'm really like um, uh, I really believe we were in uh, like in the growth of renewable energy sources and uh, when I joined uh, Hyvon was actually the idea was beh behind that was actually what can we do to play around with the uh, like such high and energy intensive industry yeah what can we do for the grid yeah because uh, well uh, I've, I've been you know like uh, I've been like, up and down in the road with the construction of renewable energy sources and I know how difficult it is to actually to get the, the connection mm -hmm. and the thing is uh, when uh, well, when you get connected, like with the, like uh, let's say solar uh, solar plant, the biggest challenge is actually its uh, its intermittency and variability because you need to well the sun is doesn't always shine and you have daylight. Right. Yeah. This is a big problem. And when you have actually a stable and predictable load of comparable sizes, like uh, well, with the crypto mine, mm -hmm. then you can have you actually tap the full potential of uh, stabilizing the grid. You can okay. Use this industry. Yeah. To actually to well to execute things like you know well the much response we all heard about it but this is kind of mechanism okay but actually the actual physics behind it is, is that uh, you need to have a grid stable in terms of that uh, well you know the load uh, the power production and the load on the grid has to be equal all the time. Okay. So yeah, you can never match it like in, uh, like ideally, right? Yeah. Uh, so you need to have some kind of resources either keep reserved from the generation side or uh, have the potential to curtail uh, like on the demand side. Okay. So when you look this uh, this industry actually well it's an ideal uh, example actually how you can execute uh, such things as grid balancing. Yes. So you know we decided to play around in Hyvon how we can bring these solutions to our clients and uh, we actually we have quite a lot of things coming up we have uh, new features on our operation system okay and uh, the given the fact that we actually control the miners from the firmware some point of view and we actually offer our clients like full kind of ecosystem of uh, you know firmware control and the um, operation system and the farm management and then I think we'll, we'll, well, we'll definitely be the market and uh, we'll be the best solution. <laughs> That's fantastic so essentially you're going to be using um, your customers all of us all of our miners like a battery or to load balance the system for the entire grid. Absolutely this is kind of it's indeed it's like a well a storage uh -huh. right, effectively right yeah it, it's on one sided but if you think about it it's really hard to find an industry or find it like technology which you can actually curtail safely mm -hmm. without anything like causing any damage to like to the like technological process which you're actually utilizing for yeah let's say i don't know you you can take like an like a, like in medicine or other uh, other high load industries like in you know, steel making right okay well if you have like a let's say like you know uh, electric uh, how do you call it uh, a smelter right when you need to actually, oh yeah yeah uh, you know to, to, you cannot really stop the process you need to have it keep it going you know can you cannot just cut the energy yeah while here uh see we can actually we can curtail without you know, with significant damage, and actually, well, of course, it has to be profitable for the miner mm -hmm. and for the end user. But we are working on that. Uh, the such uh, curtailments are short, right? They, and they are not affecting uh, like the income and all the main activity of the miner. So yeah, that's the idea behind it. Very cool. So you're you're almost like a broker with the energy industry, exactly, and the miners, so that they can get compensated for their downtime, Absolutely. while the energy company can continue to run at you know full tilt or whatever their their production you know value is so if they're at you know percent it's 80 percent load yep. and we're pushing you know 20 percent of that 80 percent and they need more power over here Absolutely. we can bring that down to 10 percent and give yep. them the extra 10 percent and our, us as miners would get paid 
Absolutely. And the, the, you see, uh, the more renewables are uh, introduced into the system, uh, it's actually, well, this is a trend which will not, uh, well, we definitely in our lifetime we'll see a lot of things happening in the energy sector. Yeah. It's actually the last decade uh, has been not just uh, well, quite a life changing for, uh, you know, for crypto industry, but for energy industry as well. You know, and renewables suddenly become the, the cheapest energy source. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, well, right now when, when someone considers to invest into renewable energy, or oh, sorry, into energy sector at all, just any, uh, you know, power production to asset renewables number one because the uh, levelized cost of electricity which is well it's like uh, which accumulates uh, cap uh, capital expenditure and operational expenditure over the, over the lifetime of the project yeah in, in let's say in the energy sector it's about 20 years let's say for you know oh okay uh, this is lifetime you know for yeah. average you know, well i'm not talking about hydro or like nuclear but let's say for you know, for coal-fired or gas-fired power plant or whatever okay. like yeah. just traditional fuel. yeah Traditionally, dirty yeah, 20, energy years yeah and the same thing goes for renewable because this is kind of a, like a horizon horizon which you can plan for so basically uh, right now the renewables have become the cheapest one mm -hmm. so we'll have uh, we'll see just uh, rise in the in this technology coming more and more to the grid and this will you know we have to be in you know, this challenge yeah which actually comes with the renewables have to be the result of uh, balancing system so the right. more efficient uh, balancing markets will be there uh, and the technology is available to actually to compensate that well the it is the better so it's fantastic we need to do <laughs> yeah to do yeah and uh, getting into it early you know before somebody else Exactly. That's fantastic. Well, and there's, you know, I'm sure there's other people getting into it as well. But being some of the, you know, the largest uh, platform that you are, I think, uh, really helps going to kind of push that along the way Absolutely. as well. Well, we are, we're trying to explore this potential, yeah. which we have, and the, the client base, and uh, well, we, we have a trust of our clients, and uh, we believe this this will be really the future, especially for you know this is kind of synergy between the energy market and the uh, you know and, and crypto industry. Yeah, I think it's like a, it's a perfect match. So fantastic. Uh, really believe. That. Very cool. Well, thank you for your time. I appreciate thank it. You. Awesome. Thank you. Good deal.